Hello once more. It seems that on 10th of August there was again quite a lot of interesting space weather events. But I'll begin again with more common data. Besides the increased number of density spikes, where the biggest one reached almost 200 particles per cubic centimeter, we can see that the velocity grew to 450 kilometers per second, together with the density. And temperature. This could be a design of a CME impact, but I didn't know that we were expecting one. Low energy protons seem to be unaffected as well. However, there is a small wave on electron graph. Not to mention the spike, which is probably unrelated. Strange thing. Another wave is appearing at the moment when I record this movie on the electron chart. This one seems to be bigger. Funny. It seems that the BY magnetic component was the one affected mostly by the impact and it reached minus 10 nanoteslas, while BZ was oscillating around zero. It gets stranger when we look at the satellite environment plot, where we can see that the KP index was raised to 4. BY magnetic component shouldn't cause geomagnetic storms, BZ is the one which causes them. I would love to tell you how much the aurora power grew during this impact, but it looks that the ovation prime monitors on ISWA were switched off just when the storm started. Another event which is worth to be mentioned is the sector boundary crossing, which was recorded by Enlil around midnight. Earth is now placed in a part of IMF with positive polarity. It seems that not only the Ovation Prime monitors were switched off. The same happened with most of monitors from CCMC, Magnetosphere and Ionosphere. All of them stopped working around 1940 UTC. Let's thank NASA for keeping us away from data which could be too disturbing for our delicate minds. If I would have to guess what is the reason, I would point out those charts from Bartle Cosmic Ray page. It seems that we were struck again by some enormous rays right at the time when the CCMC monitors were switched off. But in the difference to previous case, which I've recorded in last movie, those rays were probably responsible for the burst on Schumann resonance monitor. I can be wrong, but this weird gap can be connected with the passing of sector boundary. But why those rays affected the Schumann resonance if the previous ones didn't? It can be connected with different energy band of those particles, but sadly there is no monitor which would measure it. It can be connected as well with the angle which differs slightly from the previous rays. Because in last case, cosmic rays approach Earth with a bigger angle they were probably trapped by the open magnetospheric field lines. Now, when the angle is smaller, rays started to be reflected within the ionosphere.
but of course it's just another guess. Okay, but why the angle is different now? There are probably two factors. Rotation of the Sun and Earth which is moving along its orbit. Just as I said before, magnetic field lines are very dynamic. Most important is the fact that the mine direction is the same as before. So the rays clearly originated in the same source. During the last week there was quite a lot of changes in the magnetic polarity of the Sun and entire heliosphere. Notice that the positive polarity moved at last to the North Hemisphere, what can mean that the solar cycle is ending, magnetic poles flipped. But let's look what happens next. Two flux tubes with positive outward flow appeared on the surface dominated by negative polarity. Most of open negative field lines, black ones, were connected to the strong positive current. It seems that Earth passed through this giant tube created by the magnetic connection which I've explained in my last movie. But the last image is even better. The connection suddenly disappears and the main positive polarity jumps to the second flux tube which appear before suddenly on the eastern limb. Second positive connection is gone. Some of you were asking me about my opinion about the air spots theory. I have to warn you, this subject can be difficult for the beginners. I'll begin with the Sun. As you probably know, solar cycle is driven by the changes of Sun's magnetic field. Increased solar activity is the sign that polarity of heliosphere is ready to flip upside down. Sunspots which appear on the surface of the Sun during increased activity are caused by the strongest field lines of the inner field, which are closed from both sides. They connect opposite polarities on the surface. Like those two which I've marked, sunspots appear mostly in the equatorial region. In the difference to coronal holes, which can be seen over the entire surface and which are powered by open heliospheric field lines, those which are connected to the Sun only on one side. But let's look now on Earth and the magnetosphere, which is much more stable than the heliosphere as the polarity of our planet changes much less than on the Sun. However, it is known that the magnetic poles of Earth flip as well every 300,000 years or so. Anyway, in the case of magnetosphere, closed field lines appear in just one configuration. They connect both our magnetic poles. They are responsible for the shape of our plasma sphere, radiation belts and current rings. Open field lines are connected to our magnetic poles and shape the outer magnetosphere.
So, if we're talking about Earth spots, I will point out those two systems. They are placed on opposite sides of the equator and there is probably a closed field line which connects them. Positive polarity is placed on the southern hemisphere and is connected with the high pressure system. But the air masses which are spinning closer to polar regions are driven by open magnetospheric field lines. If the hurricane Julio is the earthly version of a sunspot, then the air mass which is spinning above it is something like a coronal hole. But now I will show you a nice process which you won't rather see on the sun. A spot swallowed by a hole. Look what happened with the tropical storm which was moving towards Japan. It was cannibalized by the polar vortex. Looking from a magnetic point of view, closed field line was ripped apart and became an open field line. And this is the best moment to explain the process which is probably the main earthquake factor, magnetic reconnection. In the case of the sun, reconnection is responsible for solar flares and CMEs. So why similar process shouldn't trigger earthquakes on Earth? When there's an impact of solar particles, closed field lines can break and become open field lines. Just like here. When this happens, part of particles which were moving along those field lines is being ejected into space and the rest move back towards the surface. But this is only half of the entire story, as not all events are caused by solar activity and solar wind. Much more often we can see another process, which I call magnetospheric plasma discharge. It is connected with closed field lines of magnetosphere as well and it causes huge outflows of plasma from our planet. In the difference to events caused by impacts of solar particles, plasma discharges don't cause auroras, which are connected with increased electric potential of the ionosphere. When the outflow takes place, the potential is rapidly dropping as we are losing energetic particles. Plasma discharges affect mostly the equatorial region as the plasma is being sucked out through this connection. Those outflows are probably connected with increased number of sprites and upper atmospheric discharges when plasma is leaving the ionosphere. For the end, another burst on Schumann resonance monitor and a bunch of lightning strikes, which took place since previous recording. Take care. Class dismissed. Peace. They did hear a boom. We were under severe weather warning at that time. It was a severe thunderstorm coming through the area at that time. So all indications are that it is a lightning strike. Take a look at this video of these flames shooting out of the roof of these classrooms. About 80 people were inside these temporary classrooms. About 18 classrooms in all on this campus at the John H Hansen Middle School. Those people say they heard a loud boom, then smelled smoke. Everyone got out safely. Those students were put, uh, were there for a part of continuing education program for adults. 
firefighters rushed here in the middle of that storm. You remember that last night? They say they had no doubt once they got here that it was a lightning strike that caused this. Meanwhile, while firefighters were out here, dozens and dozens of them uh, trying to fight those flames for about three hours, people just stood by and watched. It's crazy because I actually went to school here, so it's different. I mean, it's crazy how fast it spread. It was going fast. I'm hoping they'll replace it, though. They got a lot of classrooms in there. Officials believe that lightning strike directly hit the man who was later pronounced dead here at the hospital. They tell us that group of 13 people were spectators taking in the beautiful views that were likely unaware of the danger of being up so high. When it's in the mountains in the summertime, you can usually expect electrical activity. But when you're a spectator trying to take in the beautiful views that Rocky Mountain National Park has to offer, sometimes the thought of danger is out of sight. The lightning remains um, one of the most dangerous things in Rocky Mountain National Park. On Saturday, Dr. Martin Kosnitsky, medical director for Estes Park Medical Group, says a total of 13 people were rushed to the hospital after being affected by a lightning strike. One who had CPR initiated in the park um, has been pronounced um, dead, unfortunately. On Friday, it was a similar story. Park rangers say eight people went hiking near the Youth Crossing Trail when a lightning strike killed 42-year-old Rebecca Telheit from Ohio injuring her husband and friends, along with five others. This time of year, you know, we encourage our, our visitors, if they're hiking to summits, for instance, to be starting really when it's dark, and it's 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Kyle Patterson, spokesperson for the Rocky Mountain National Park, says anyone who is above tree line or 10,000 feet and sees dark clouds rolling in to take cover right away or try and get to lower ground, because experts say these storm systems can be unpredictable. Um, these storms can come up very quickly. People get caught off guard. 